the University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes bring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. It's Professor Jeff Boats. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? How's the coffee? Oh, not bad, not bad. Got a refresher. You know, the, the famous saying uh, that a mathematician is a machine that turns coffee into theorems? <laughs> it's, it's true. We probably drink way too much of it. Hey, that's what if that's what it takes, man. Uh, how is teaching going? Pretty good, you know, lots of, I'm trying to keep up on the grading. This is the weekend, I swear I'm gonna catch up on my grading, I swear, just like I was gonna the last couple of weekends. Oh yeah, this, oh, this yeah. time it's gonna happen, I promise. Um, I'm sorry, Jeff, I can't help myself because uh, I promise, I promise that the tax returns will be available in the next two weeks, I promise. <laughs> God. People <clears throat> don't take promising as seriously as they ought to. <laughs> Well observed. <laughs> Scout's honor. Oh, yes. Grading is sort of like that, except we have to finish it before the 15th, 16th week, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they tell us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Professor Mar Livesey is here with us today. Apparently I am. <laughs> At least yes. in physical form. <laughs> So it wasn't until my son uh, dropped a couple uh, pretzels in front of my camera that we saw that you had been sort of like uh, uh, sandbagging us with some pretzels off screen and they're chocolate covered. Dark chocolate, the best chocolate. Oh, mm. Ooh. That's we're doing a remote from Mara's house. <laughs> those bags are deceptive. Like it's, it's just, that's a lot of great chocolate inside the, that size container. That's all I have to say. There is. <laughs> low jupiter <laughs> oh that cat the cats are out and there's nothing wrong with that uh professor dan maggio is here with us today hey matt how's the rain where you are um it's starting to come down okay and i will share a chocolate story with you Ooh. so when i was up north um do you know where Empire, Michigan is? Oh, yes. They have a little store called The Grocer's Daughter, and they make the most amazingly delicious chocolate. So I have several bars of like 70% dark chocolate in my cupboard. Wait I'm a minute. Saving. Did, did, did I hear you say you were going to share with the rest of us? No. Oh, what darn. delicious okay. things are you going to make and share? I'm not going to make anything. I like to just, I like to eat it. Um, ah. And actually, they made this. Um, Jeff will appreciate this. This uh, chocolate coffee drink, where they, they take a melted chocolate and mix it with coffee, and Ooh. it was. Ooh. So if you're ever in Empire, make sure you stop by the grocer's daughter. Now it is pouring. It's coming down. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, it's quit here. Hasn't Wild. quite started here yet. We'll have to pass that along to Tom Dal. Oh my God, it is pouring. Tom Dalton, if he's on his uh, ventures around Michigan, if he's ever in Empire. Too. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, Professor Stephen Manning, um, if we see you running, we'll we'll already. Know. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going in. It is starting to sprinkle. <laughs> okay. From what I'm hearing from our other guests, it's uh, the sprinkling is not going to last long. Mind you, Stephen, we would prefer sprinkling as opposed to a hailstone knocking, you know, knocking the living daylights out of you. So yeah, that's right. It's going to get it's going to get dark apparently. <laughs> Didn't this go on, on the screen? It's almost like watching news footage. Like I'm right here and it's starting to rain. Back to you. Oh, it's down here. No, Let's go to five people who've been in the rain before. Come on, where's Bob Bennett when we need him? You know. Oh my gosh! Hilarious. Standing on the overpass. Absolutely hilarious. Okay, I'm in. I'm in and safe. Excellent. Excellent. It, is, it is dark. It's like it's yeah. three in the morning. Like eight o'clock. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of weird. Twilight. Uh, Professor uh, Beth Oljar is also with us today. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. It, it's just about the way these things are timed, I swear. There's that country <laughs> music again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Dwayne Eddie guitar. Uh, the twang to 
how out of this is uh, my internet is not able. <laughs> That's a dying <laughs> robot. <laughs> Poor Beth, I feel so bad. Oh, what's going on over there? I'm gonna walk over there and find out what's going on. No. <laughs> Professor Dean Chow is here. Pleasure to be here, as always. Thanks. <laughs> with with capable internet, I hope. I hope. I, I really hope so. Hey, when you turned your head, I actually saw. Yeah, you did get a haircut. It's pretty. It's pretty slick. I can feel my neck again. So. But I've got to uh, I got to be clean for tomorrow. So that's right. That's right. What's Someone. tomorrow? I'm officiating a student's yeah you know, two students' wedding. So hopefully it's not going to be in the middle of a rainstorm too. Yeah. So yeah, I think this should be it for a while. At least I hope it will be. I don't know. We'll see. Yes, we will. So uh, Professor Heather Hill is here with us today. Hello. What's going on, Heather? Oh, I spent a couple hours with. Uh... Professor Claire Crabtree this afternoon. Oh, how's she doing? She's well. She's good. She's That's good. Great. She asked about the ATP crew. Oh. Reminded me of, you know, Edwin and George Pickering and Art Beer and all of our precursors. So mm -hmm. absolutely. She's, she's well. It's good to hear that she's doing all right. Yeah. Do we need to invite her back? I think that might be, I think she might like that a lot. Yeah. When was the last time she was on an episode? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. She was part of one of the originals back then. Sarah yeah. was. I so think when we did the the goodbye to Edwin, she stopped by. If I yeah, remember. that was it. Yeah. And of course, last but most certainly not least, Professor James Balfour Tubbs the third. Oh, I can be last and least. That's okay. <laughs> you're better. You're never, you're never uh, least. Wait a minute. Um, Matt, do we forget Jeff? <laughs> no, uh, Jeff was first. Started with was first. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't recall. Okay, you're right. Okay. I screw it up so often. I appreciate the double check, though. I, I definitely do. So things are well, Jim. So far, so good. How many the more range weekends? has passed over. <laughs> How many weekends do you need to catch up on grading? Oh, I'm I'm actually almost caught up. That's great. I uh, I'm very jealous of you. <laughs> well, it just it's just more stuff to start. I still got re uh, lectures to record. Of course. Uh, of course. Getting ready for the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, folks, this is a uh, program where you can send us questions about anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can uh, contact us in a number of ways. You can email us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook or Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of New Mercy. We've got a nice set of listener questions here, dear panel. Below is a compilation of various questions for your fine show. The 25 questions are compiled from some Ooh. fun facts I gather in my daily travels, and I hope they prove challenging and enjoyable. Please enjoy best wishes, longtime question sender, Amy Dixon. Thanks for sending these questions, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Let's yeah. see. Send more. Beth has, Beth has stepped away, she says, because okay. of her internet. All right. We'll I'll forgive her. Internet, but okay. uh, we'll still give her a chance to say goodbye at the end. Okay. Which uh, MLB team calls Globe Life Field their home stadium? Uh, Globe Life. Globe Life. Globe Life. Is and that... uh, you don't have to think too hard if you've been watching any television for the last couple of weeks. Tampa Bay. Mm -mm. Dodgers. Dodgers. Well, is that the one in Arlington then? Uh, that's right. It's oh. where the Rangers play uh, in Arlington because that's where um, the ALCS and part of the World Series is being hosted. So it's just really, really weird to not have the home teams be hosting their own game. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Very odd. Very odd. And uh, Globe Life, by the way, is the one with the retractable roof but not in the way that you think about like a moonroof on a car. The whole roof rolls off the front of the stadium and over to the side as one oh. piece. It's the weirdest thing. You have to go look it up. It's very, very odd. So it's not like the Sky Dome where it just kind of re retracts a little bit? Just kind of... Right. Hmm. That's more like a comb over on a stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Jeff. Now it's raining here. There we go. Um, 
I'll give you a hint. It's a Red Wing. What NHL player scored the very last goal at Maple Leaf Gardens? Steve Eiserman. Bob Probert. It was not Stevie. It was not. It was Bob Probert, right? I think. It was Bob Probert. That's right. It was Bob Probert. Yeah. I think he was – was he playing for them or was he playing for Chicago at the time? I'm trying to remember. That's a good question. That's a good question. I think he might have been playing for Chicago when he scored it. So That's wild. In what year – let's see if we can do this mathematically. Uh-oh. In what year did the Binney and Smith Company install a sharpener on the back of the Crayola box? Ooh, that was a mathematically. Um, 54. I'll say sixty-four. It's I think sixty-three. You're all off, but some more than others. Uh, actually, okay. they're all two two recent uh, dates, but you don't have to go much further back. Forty-nine. Okay, Let's see. Thirty-seven. No, what I've got here was 1958. 1958. Oh, okay. oh, 58. Okay. okay. I got to go shut a window or two. Go Please shut a window. Do. Yes, I believe that uh, Stephen is also uh, dissolved into the ether. <laughs> we'll oh we'll, we'll carry their load. Can you name seven of the 15 actors who played Tarzan on film? Wow. Okay. Oh Ron God. Eli, Johnny John Weissmuller, yep. Lex Barker. Yep. Mike Henry. Oh, my gosh. Elmo Lincoln. It, that, that's it. You, you fulfilled the criteria. Like Brendan Fraser or something. Absolutely incredible. Uh, wow. Yeah, was it, was it Brendan Fraser on there, too? Did he actually so. play No, no, he, it was George of the Jungle. Oh, George. that's right. That's right. George close of the enough. Jungle. I think it's close enough for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Edgar Rice Burroughs might have issues with that, though. <laughs> <laughs> It's clearly an iconic role. I can't even, I mean, yeah. I don't even think that we've got half of those number of people who've played James Bond before. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, Elmo Lincoln was the first. I remember that, and the getup that he had was ridiculous. So, What uh, infamous American was once married to Marina Prusikova? Lee Harvey Oswald. Yes, that was Lee Harvey Oswald. Now, what was Marina's claim to fame? She was she was his Russian wife, mm-hmm. married, to Lee Oswald. married to Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's plenty. That's, that's basically it. You'd oh. say infamous, right? Yes, totally infamous. What percentage of citizens of the United States of America have blue eyes? Thirty uh, percent. Uh, Fifteen. Forty-five. Wait, Twenty-two. No. Okay, well, hold on. Why don't we just use ourselves as? A cross section. Anybody here blue eyes? Nope. I do. Blue green. Well, does, does green. green does blue? Does, I mean, yeah, does bloodshot blue count? Blue. <laughs> I mean, you all throw some darts at the board and you get within some kind of error bar. It's uh, basically a third. It's 27%. Oh, okay. right. oh. And my guess is hazel eyes are getting counted as blue if it's that, that high. Yeah, yeah I, I have hazel eyes, and I've never... I been have blue. hazel, and I refuse to be counted as blue. Yeah, yeah. So what? Okay. So hazel is what? A combination of brown, brown and green? Brown and green. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe mine are just green, then. I always say hazel. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever questioned me on it or challenged me. Yeah. <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet. Mine still <laughs> says blue on my driver's license. They're, they're <laughs> kind of blue-green. Flexible. Bloodshot. Right. What sport was originally going to be called Mintonet, as in the first syllables mint? Mintonet. Badminton? That's a good guess, but that is not it. Mintonet? Mintonet. 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 Table tennis. Volleyball. It's volleyball. Oh! <laughs> it volleyball. That's great. <laughs> I mean, there's the, oh. like, let's all go play volleyball, kind of like more sort of jockey way of saying it. And then there's the partake it's in the game. Okay. Of the min- min- partake in Mintonet, yes. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds wow. so highbrow. I love it. George Carlin's take about how any game with a net is just a variation of ping pong. Yeah, basically. <laughs> volleyball is team ping pong played on standing on the table with a raised net. <laughs> Oh, it's so true. Absolutely true. What are the three most common names 
for the Pope. Jim? Um, of all the Popes. Oh, you mean uh, His Majesty? Uh, his or Holiness. Gregory. Like Pontiff. Gregory. Um, you mean first names? Oh, you mean the first? You mean their names that they, oh. they, they themselves? Oh, three oh, most prominent. Oh, oh Leo oh. would be one of them. Gregory. Pius. John. John. John is number one at 21 occurrences. Yeah. John. Francis. Francis has only been one. Oh. <sighs> I, Benedict sorry. is probably not there. So Benedict is number two. Gregory. At 17. Yeah. Really? What well, was number two? Benedict had 12. Um, um, Innocent. It Let's says that see. there's been 17 Benedicts and 16 Gregories is number oh. three. So. Oh. Gregory, okay. Yep. What, n- none of the Piuses or anything like that made it to Sometimes the top? Sometimes it helps to be a midi, M-I-D-E-D-I-M-I-S. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what is, I think that we're just talking by name frequency here. The most common item found on the ground as litter. Cigarette butts. Yeah, it's a cigarette butt. Absolutely. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? We're seeing less of it these days, but still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say dirty tissues. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like latex gloves and masks right about now, maybe. These days. Syringes. Ooh. What have happened to good old bubblegum wrappers? You know, I mean, geez, we don't even have those anymore. Spare change. Oh. <laughs> For those who actually go and do work there, it's called Dreamland, Paradise Ranch, and sometimes Watertown. What are these lesser known names referring to? Amusement parks? Mm mm. The wait, wait, exact wait, wait, wait. opposite of an amusement park. What, like Fermi 2 or something like uh, that? I mean, uh, prison? prison? Not a prison, not a power plant, but getting closer. Pentagon. People work there for the U.S. Oh. government. The Pentagon. Fort Knox. Oh, is it uh, on a, like an aircraft carrier? Getting closer. Naval bases? A submarine. Something. Air Force One? Oh! Air, area 51. <laughs> That's funny. No, it's Area 51. It's Area, area 51. Oh. Okay. Off to work at Watertown. Sure. In the middle of the desert. It's like working for control and chaos or something like that. You know, it's like the old get yeah. smart thing. Ooh, this is a great one. You see that we have, of course, Brian Masonville, one of our uh, helpers uh, joining us today. There are 1.2 million Brian's with an eye. In the United States, how many Brian's with a Y are there in the U.S.? Oh, 40,000. 600,000. 100,000. 750,000. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa. Um, you're all quite a, quite a bit off. <laughs> oh, more? there's more? I No, no. I, I, I want to repeat. There are 1.2 million Brian's with an I. Yes. Okay. But in Latin... Jehovah starts with an I. <laughs> Thank um, you, Sean Connery. <laughs> um, Brian's with a Y is 312,000. 312, oh. So it's mm. a factor of just about four now. Okay, all right. So one out of four, they decide to go with a Y. Okay. We, we got an I, and we're very happy with it. You know? I should have figured that out from the fact that a Scrabble set has four I's, but only one Y. Oh, no, it has two Y's. So we'd have oh, been. but that would have been close. That would have been close. Yeah, but how many Brian's with a Q? Oh. <laughs> or a J? Uh, we don't talk about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like Fight Club. What newspaper is often called the newspaper of record? New York, New York Times. Times. Yes, the New York Times. Thank you. The Gray Lady. Yep, that's right. All the news that's fit to print. Mm-hmm. And then some. And then some more. What MTV VJ once appeared on a Brady bu- in the Brady Bunch sequel as the bride of Bobby Brady? Oh wow! So I, what? Not Nina Blackwood or Martha Quinn? Martha, Martha Quinn. Yeah. Martha. Yeah. Martha. Yeah. Martha. Yeah. yeah. Martha Quinn. I don't know if you've listened to Nina Blackwood lately, but she she clearly has had many packs of cigarettes. <laughs> Oh, oh, has she? Oh, yeah. What, what, does, what does Nina Blackwood sound more like? 
be Arthur now? I mean, kind of. I'm assuming, and I'm sorry if Nina's listening to the show because we have a lot of <laughs> listeners. Um, and if there's another reason why, I, po- why I apologize. You, why but it certainly sounds uh, like this. He's never playing any of your requests again. She's got that Brenda Vaccaro voice going on there. Breathy. Yeah, she's never going to play my request. Oh. <laughs> your your Kaja Gugu re- request will never be played again. So Yeah, that's it. Oh, my Damn. God. Who were the first two hosts of the TV show Good Morning America? Mm. Ryan Jamie Polly? Jane Polly? No. Uh, what, what, what was the show again, Matt? Good morning, America. Good morning, America. Oh, well, uh, David Hartman, wasn't it? Yeah, David Hartman, yeah. Hartman was on there. Yep. And who was the female? Um, the female was initials N D. Oh, Nancy Dickerson. No, no, no. Um, she was the one that played. Oh, was it um Ted Knight's wife on that one show? Um, wow. Nancy. First name Nancy. Nancy, Nancy Desalt. Nancy DeSalt is right. Wow. Mm. Sorry. I, that one, I had to work that one out. It was like a kidney stone. So You had to pass DeSalt? Ah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What great American novel had its title translated in Japanese to Angry Raisins? Raisin in the Sun? Grapes of Wrath. The Grapes of Wrath. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Angry raisins. I Angry love that. raisins. I'm like, what? <laughs> a little bit of angst there. I think that you all can work this one out too if you just uh, rub a couple uh, neurons together. Well, like Nancy DeSalt? Oh, well, you already figured that out. After the U.S. military, what is America's largest or second largest in that case purchaser of explosives? Mark Benvenuto. <laughs> Partial credit. <laughs> Bureau of Mines. Um, let's see. Second largest. Uh, I think that they're bending the rules a little bit because I believe that pyrotechnics, aka fireworks, would count as explosives. Oh. The Park oh. Service? No, it's not the Park Service. It's an independent uh, money making venture. <laughs> oh, uh, Disney World. Disney, yeah. It's oh, Disney. okay. Oh, oh, that would make sense. Okay, yeah, got it. Dan, okay. Dan, Dan, yeah. Dan, Dan, oh. Dan. Chanting for Dan here. Lucky He's guess. On He's on a roll. Um, this New Jersey city served as the nation's capital in 1784 only. What Trent. is it? Trenton. Trenton, Trenton, New Jersey. Former... Not, not Trenton, Michigan. So no, not Trenton, Michigan. <laughs> And not Clarkston or Clawson. Right. <laughs> Clawson. Okay. Oh, wow. This is quite interesting. I, Amy is definitely speaking our language here. How many Belle Isles are there in the United States? Are you ready? Whoops. I nearly gave it completely away. I'll try again. How Five. Many? How, many? <laughs> How many? Five. How well, many? It's not five. It's a little oh. bit higher than five. Fifty? So, eight. No, it's eight. Good job, Jim. Uh, Five are islands. One is a town. One is a historic house. And one is just a peninsula. What a lie. It's not an isle. It's a peninsula. Hmm. But a house. Yeah, one is a house on an island. That's a good question. Very good question. I would go if it was a haunted island. What famous game show host graduated with a chemistry degree from the University of Manitoba? Alex Trebek. Mm-mm. That's a good guess, though. Like Wink Martindale? Um, who Perfect. else was... What's his name on Wheel of Fortune? Pat Sajak? No. No. He's not, no. no. Uh, not Chuck Woolery. Who else? Game uh, show host. Uh, a lot of game show hosts with Detroit ties. I'm getting a little freaked out. <laughs> Uh, Tom Kennedy. Is it re- recent or old? Well, it depends on your perspective. My middle son, Lorenzo, who's going to turn 13 in a few months, told me the other day, back in ancient times, you know, Dad, 2009. Um, <laughs> we're talking about, I mean, I could give it away in a second. The original big time host of Let's Make a Deal was. Monty Hall? 
Monty Hall. Monty really? Hall. Hmm. Chemistry degree. Pretty weird, huh? Oh. Weird stuff. In what city would one find the American TV game show Hall of Fame? Oh, I'm seeing a segue. Oh, somewhere in California? It's Vegas. Vegas? Yeah, oh. It's oh. Okay, I was going to say L.A. I mean, you know, like Culver City or something like that, but okay, Vegas. Um, oh, no. I guess I should uh, read a little bit ahead. It's Las Vegas, Nevada, of course. It was located inside the Las Vegas Hilton and permanently closed in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ancient times. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can play a little bit with our common knowledge to figure this one out. And I think everybody will probably have uh, um, some input here. What is Stephen King's best-selling book? The Stand. It's not... Uh, um, Christine. Yeah, I was gonna say Christine. Oh. Cujo. Oh, not Cujo, not Christine. The year twenty. The Shining. Yeah, The Shining. No, no, no. no it, it is. I, I heard the twenty twenty. Um, it's The Shining. Yeah, it's The Shining. Oh, okay. I mean, I wonder whether that correlates um to the success of the movie. Is was The Shining successful? Do you remember it being successful? Movie, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The book and the movie were successful. Yes, remember that uh, Stephen King hates the movie. Oh, really? Really? Apparently, there's a lot of uh, Stanley Kubrick threw in that had nothing to do with the book, and he didn't like it. Interesting. Well, was it? Didn't they also like borderline torture Shelley Duvall in it? You know, in order to get her reaction. Right, right. Oh, creepy movie. Very, very creepy movie. Who played the U.S. president in the John Candy movie? Now, this was the movie oh. where Canada. Um, it was a wonderful movie, by the way. Uh, sort of had a small release back in the '90s. Canada basically runs out of money and goes, "Crap, what are we going to do?" So they invade America. And immediately surrender. Well, I guess you got to take on all of our debt now. Blah, blah, blah. It's actually really, really cute. Bill, so who Pullman. Would... Bill Pullman. No, but that's a great that's a great uh, um, guess. No, this was a, uh, a fairly distinguished actor of that time. Um, again, mid, late 90s, if I remember correctly. Um, Eugene Levy. Mm-mm. That's a good guess, too. Huh. Initials A... A doesn't get easier than that. Alan, Alan Arkin. Alda? Alan Alda. Alan Alda. Yeah. It was oh, Alan Alda. Alda. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Alan Alda played the unnamed president in the movie. Uh, it's just a just a yeah. cute. Movie. Yeah, President Hawkeye it's Pierce. Movie. President Hawkeye Pierce. <laughs> That's right. Well, time to dig deep into the uh, annals of the Burroughs family so that we can find out what Ask the Professor favorites we're going to be talking about today. And it's a cool one. It's a cool one. What is your favorite reason to sleep in? Hold on. Well, what's this concept of sleeping what? How? <laughs> Needing a reason? <laughs> uh, it's a good point. It's a very, very good point. Up late uh, the night before. Yeah. Is that your favorite reason, though? Oh. Right? Does it does it have does it have to involve sleep? Actual sleep? <laughs> Never mind. My favorite reason is laziness. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> that, yeah, that's about as logical, straight to the point. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised no one has said staying up to watch the entire debate yet. Oh uh, well, no, I was up a long time after that. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I asked I asked Beth just now via text, and she says. I said, what is your favorite reason to sleep in? And she says, because I can. Ah, uh, yes. Why <laughs> That's the philosopher. Me? That's because the philosopher in her. Sleep, therefore I am. Uh, <laughs> because the bed is there. Yeah. yeah. Because the bed is warmer than the ambient temperature around me. How's about that? Well, yes, that's quite often the case for me. Yeah. It's, it's nice and toasty. Why break it up? Yep. My uh, favorite reason to sleep I'll, in is it's not ready yet. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying because the coffee's not ready yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes Yours, sense. Mara, what were you saying? Yeah. My favorite reason to sleep in is because it's Christmas Day and I have nothing else better to do. That's awesome. That yeah, is. I was gonna say because it's I'm on vacation. 
we can dream, right? We well, can. right about now, I, I've told my wife just to splurge for ourselves for Christmas. I, I think we're going to go get ourselves one of those weighted blankets. Oh, yeah. Let's see what those are like. Has yeah. anybody got any experience with it, or am I, yeah, I going to be the guinea pig? We have one. And? Did you like it? Um, no, it didn't do anything for me. Oh, some people okay. like, I don't like to feel I don't like to feel that weight. I, yeah, I would rather I have either. a I don't feel like I a don't bunch feel of like lighter blanket on top of me. Okay. Beth also says one does not need a reason. Sleep is a gift of the gods. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, awesome. Hmm. Fair. I can't help but think of uh, friends of ours who, and this was some while ago, um, noticed that Leslie and I were waking up extra early on Sundays to attend church service. And uh, the couple, um, as they were, looked at each other and the wife remarked, we go to Our Lady of the Very Warm Covers and Mattress (laughs) (laughs) on Sundays. And I've I've never forgotten that. I thought that was really cool. I think it's only a matter of time before we see a parish named after that, given some of the creative (laughs) names I see around. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, let's not talk about parish names, okay? I still have not been forgiven by my in-laws family. You know, what's the one church on uh, 12 Mile St. Beads or whatever? Beads, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I was at St. Bidet's for the for the, the long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was I was in trouble. So hey, um, these days I spend more time there than at church. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's Our Lady of almost everything, you know. I mean. <laughs> yes, there is. Um, I'm Our Lady so... of Blessed Acceleration. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to announce that we've reached the end of our episode oh. before things get too far out of hand. So the time has come to say goodbye, Professor Hill. That's the she lives to amuse, as do I. <laughs> Professor Chow. See ya. Professor Libsy. See ya. Professor Tubbs. Goodbye. Professor Manning. See ya. Professor yeah. Mato. See ya. Goodbye. And Professor Boats. Blessed be. And then these words from the University of Detroit Mercy. As the professor is transcribed at the facilities of our houses, but we're still out of the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy. As the professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo.